up, everybody? Welcome to Plant Strong Live. My name is Corey, and with me, as always, I have New York Times bestselling author and founder of Plant Strong, Rip Esselstyn. And we have, we have a, I don't know, I feel like it, I'm in the New York state of mind today, Rip, because we got a lot of New York Times bestselling <laughs> authors right here. Who we got with us, Rip? Talk to me. We have two of my best buddies in the plant-based space. And just insane human beings. We have Cyrus Kambada. We have Robbie Barbero. They are the two masterminds behind mastering diabetes. They are, in my opinion, they probably know more about mastering type one, type one and a half, gestational, type two uh, diabetes than any other people on the planet. And it is absolutely my privilege to have these guys uh, on Facebook Live today. They both have appeared on the Plant Strong podcast, Robbie, about maybe a year and a half, two years ago. And Cyrus, actually, we just interviewed about a week ago, and that'll be uh, airing probably in about two to three weeks. But you guys, thanks for joining me today. And um, Corey, what are we what are we going to have Cyrus and Robbie tee up for us? Okay. You know, we, we've got to, uh, I'm going to let these guys speak for themselves. Folks, as always, we're here to help you make this plant-based thing easy all right and so you got robbie robbie and cyrus are both living with type 1 diabetes and their diet consists of a low fat whole food plant-based diet they're going to tell you all about it and then later in the show as we continue on we're going to show you the recipe and we're going to tell you about a product that they developed just for their community. And of course, we're going to give you an incredible deal on it today. So stick around. Uh, Cyrus, how are you doing today, man? It looks like you just got to the gym. You're shredded. You're looking huge. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, my man. Uh, yeah. So we just moved to Florida. Uh, we live in St. Pete, Florida. We came from Pennsylvania, where it's not that warm, down to St. Pete, Florida, where it is uber warm. So every day it's between 90 and 100 degrees. I get up in the morning, I go and I exercise, and then I eat nothing but incredible plant strong food all day long. I feel like a million bucks and I'm trying to be like Rip and maybe I'll get there one day. Hey, we, I think we're all trying to be like Rip, I think. It's I like know. it's like it, it, the whole like Mike thing, if you're old enough to know what that campaign was back in the day, it's new. It's it's now like Rip. If I could be like Rip, I want to be, be I want to be, be like, like Rip, Rip, like Yeah, Rip. exactly. Hey, hey, hey Cyrus, be like Rip. Cyrus and Robbie and and everybody the plant strong people. I want you to know I am in Wisconsin right now. I'm going to show you kind of where I am. You can see, right? This little, oh, that is amazing. That little, this little lake where I am and Robbie and Cyrus, I just got back from this little town called Frederick and they have the most adorable two pickleball courts. And <laughs> I played for probably an hour in this very hot weather. So if I'm sweating, I apologize, but, Man, it was epic. Robbie, you should have been there. Cyrus, you know, I know that you like swinging the pat the pickleball racket as well, but I have more of a history with Robbie than I do with you in, on true. the pickleball courts. Yeah. That's true. But, Plus, but, I'm not a huge fan of pickles, but that's okay. This is separate. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie, talk to me about this beautiful setup that you have, and what are we going to be making today, my friend? Okay. Well, it's an honor to be here on Rip's show and with you, Corey. We're going to make a very simple hydrating fruit plate, and then we're going to put together a dressing, and we're going to put the omelet green in the dressing, which I'm super pumped about. So we're amping up our antioxidants, amping, amping up our plant medicine, and we're going to have fun making this together. Now, Robbie, I just, I have to, you just dropped a, a huge word there that I have no idea what it was. You said omelet green, all right? Now, yeah. listen, I know that we've talked about mastering diabetes, but am I correct that you guys actually created a product. Now you could call it a supplement. Now listen, that's not a curse word on this channel, okay? Because the truth is a supplement is something that you add to your already existing amazing diet, okay? But the thing is, is like this product right here, we're gonna tell you more about it in a second. It was founded by these guys, okay? And it is made from whole real foods. Everything's organic. And that's what it is, okay? So we're gonna tell you about it in just a little bit. I wanted to show you the website, show you what we what he said, because Amla is kind of hard to pronounce. Amla, <laughs> um, uh -huh. um, um, la, right? And we're gonna um, have Cyrus, 
tell us a little bit more about it in a second. But I want to stay focused on this recipe because, as we know, real food, food that we put in our mouths, food that we chew, food that we make and consume with all of its true fiber content and everything else in its original form, this is what we're trying to do. So, Robbie, bring me in, man. Bring right. me in. This is This is the foundation of a healthy diet, okay? If you want to achieve great health in your life, you want to maximize your insulin sensitivity, you got to start with whole plant foods. And I think you should start with a bunch of uh, rips, um, bowls, and, and products he's created. And we talked about it on our last show. You got to just put this all together. So I'm going to make a hydrating fruit plate. I'm going to show you how simple this is. All right, all we're doing is we're putting spinach on the plate. Uh, Cyrus, do you like spinach? Spinach is my, uh, <clears throat> my favorite green. Kylie and I have this joke that we pull on each other every single day where we open the fridge and there's usually like one giant, you know, like five pound plastic container with spinach in there. And for some reason, we uh, just decided to start telling each other that we didn't have enough spinach in the house. So every single day she'll <laughs> open the fridge and be like, Cyrus, we don't have enough spinach. And I'm like, oh God, let me go get some from the store. And then there'll be like a giant mound of it inside of there already. So, hey, Robbie. Robbie yes, sir. Can I, can I critique what you're doing right now? I know. Please. I was just thinking the same thing. I have thing. never seen anyone so gingerly place each spinach leaf on the plate. I mean, I would just grab a handful and smash it down. Is this, is this a, have anything to do with your personality? Uh, you could maybe, maybe you could say that, you know, uh, the, the, the items on the shelf behind are neatly organized. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, Good. you know, we're, we're, we're trying to do it right here, you know, but I like what you're saying, Rip, because you are all about practicality and that's what makes your whole you know product line, everything you do so beneficial for people. Um, and, and that's great. And then sometimes I just like to waste time and try and make it look good just for fun, you know, because you got to, you got to enjoy what you're eating. You got to make, yes. make it look good. So that's what we're doing on the show. Are, are we waiting for you to do that entire bowl or? I thought we could actually do it for the entire show. And then this is actually just going to be the final recipe. Yeah, that's great. I, and, and we're not just making a salad. We're making a salad with some supercharged dressing. Okay. okay? Yeah, yeah. And the for dressing sure. is going to be the key. And I, now I, I do want to pause for a second because Rip, uh, just like your name <laughs> says, and like your family talks about, I do believe you like ripping up your greens, correct? Well, exactly, Corey. That's a little trick that I will uh, have to do sometime for the crowd. But yeah, you just take the spinach leaves and you just twist them and it makes them like I actually learned this from Cyrus when he was at my house with Robbie probably a year ago where he loves with the kale in particular to like do a little chiffonade and make that really small and fine. And massage. I find, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and massage it and add all the fruit and you know, let's say a little squeezed lime or lemon. And it's amazing what um, the small little pieces do. So, but everybody has their own style and look at Robbie go. I, I mean, Robbie, you're going to make such a good husband and father one day. <laughs> I love that rip. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> I just, I just had lunch with Robbie and I have to share this, you know, when I was with Robbie, he was actually, uh, we ate lunch at Whole Foods and he was ripping the mango up just like he is right now with his bare hands. And uh, I don't know how it happened, Robbie. And I hope this isn't embarrassing. I'm just being honest. It was all over his body. It was all <laughs> over his, his shirt, his pants, his mouth. The man was covered in mango. Okay. So I think Corey, if you, you can dig up that photo and somehow get that photo on this broadcast of, oh. of my outfit, I mean, that would be yep. hilarious. I'll, I'll be happy to find it. Uh, my son has my phone. Let me, let me look. I'm going to try to find it. I know I sent it to Cyrus and said, look at this man. Look at this man. But, but you guys, I think you guys all know this, but when Cyrus and Robbie stay with you at your house, they will bring literally 15 to 20 pounds of their own fruit, mangoes, bananas, kiwis. They got green leafies, you know, coming out your ears. And they will in two days go through every inch of it. It is the most spectacular sight to see. And it will literally change the way you eat for the rest of your life. And um, I have the utmost respect for not only what you guys have done with mastering diabetes, but but really the way you guys you don't only you don't only talk the talk, you walk the walk, and you do it in such an authentic and absolutely like legitimate way. It is awe inspiring. Amazing. Thanks a ton, Rip. I, I appreciate you saying that actually, because I think one of the things that 
happens a lot in the in the plant based world in general is that people try to make things too complicated too quickly. You know, and and I realize they're not trying to do that, right? People are generally looking for like more convenient ways to do many things in life. And when it comes to plant based eating, there's this whole universe of things that you got to get. You know, you, you have to think about. Where am I going to get my food? How much? Exactly what am I going to order? Do I need Tupperware containers? Do I need a blender? Do I need an Instant Pot? Do I have to get uh, you know, different cookware? And the list goes on. But I think in that process, it's easy to forget that you can make meals that are literally as simple as cutting up some peaches and, and spooning some chickpeas into a bowl and doing absolutely nothing else and just putting it in your mouth. I, I, I need I need to put a quick survey out there, okay? How many people, yes or no, how many people have had mango? I had a person from our YouTube channel, Mary Ellen, right there. I have never had mango. I saw that. I want you to just leave me a yes and a no if you've had mango. We're going to talk about that in a second. But I feel like there needs to be a sports play-by-play. And there he goes. He is cutting out the the kiwi fruit. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's got he's got the angle. He's taking it left, and he's going around the circle. And there it comes, folks. Nice right? the score. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm getting a, I'm getting a lot of yeses on the channel. Tracy, Tracy is a no. We need to put up these no's. Tracy, if you are wondering which mango to try. Uh, you're talking to two mango men here, okay? Actually, I, I'm sure Rick loves mangoes, but, you know, three mango men, all right? This Cyrus is, is a self-proclaimed mango man. But That's listen, true. Robbie, let's, Bess, let's take it out. Let's, let's get the full view on Robbie here because Robbie needs to obsess about all different types of mangoes because when he was covered in a mango blanket when we were eating lunch, he told me about all of the different types of mangoes that are out there. What do you got, Robbie? This is, um, I think it's a Tata Puri, a Tata Puri, okay? And actually, let me grab something from the fridge. Hold on. Tota, tota Puri, T-O-T-A, Tota yeah. Puri. So well, this, is a list, this is a list of all the mangoes at one farm in Homestead, Florida. And I had about over 50 of these mangoes this year. And I got to bring a bunch of them to Cyrus and Kylie and uh, Indigo. And I'm telling you, the mm. best one is the um the fairchild the fairchild and the ruby are two of the greatest mangoes you can ever have there's well over 500 different varieties of mangoes on this planet and um well, i hope that you guys get to enjoy mangoes i i need to i need to tell a quick little story so robbie was at our house probably three weeks ago for about three or four days and robbie i hope i'm not like no guys not, any not, story not, you can I'm drip. Up, Anything I, I do is, is fair game to well, share. I can, I'm, but, I'm on the edge of my seat to hear what but, you're going to say. Anyway, but R Robbie is in the midst of considering moving to Austin, Texas. And so I said, oh, wow, while you're looking for a place, like, come hang out at our, hang out at our house. We're going to be gone for, for a couple of weeks, right? Free place to stay. And he said, you know what? I don't think that I can because it's mango season in Miami and I need to be there for all these mangoes. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy is committed to his mangoes. 100% true, Rip, 100% true. You cannot miss mango season. It's quite, sh it's actually not as long as you'd want it to be, especially for particular varieties. So uh, that's part of the reason I live in Florida and I love it here and the mangoes have been, they've delivered, Rip, they've delivered. Now listen, I, I, have, I have to say a couple quick things um, uh, and we will get to that question in just a second. Folks, we are gonna do questions at the end, I mean, I can't think of three smarter guys to do questions with, so hang around. Um, I do wanna make sure that um, you know that this recipe that Robbie is making, and it is actually a recipe, he didn't just throw all this stuff together. Um, we're gonna show you how to get a very special guide. All right, this is totally free. We're gonna put the URL up here for you. We wanna give you this as a resource. There's no tricks, no nothing. We want you to get this guide. This is a summertime soup and salad guide. And Bess is going to put it up on the screen right now. This is the page. We're going to put the URL below. You're just going to go to omlagreen.com slash pages slash summertime. Okay, I know that's a little bit much to remember, but we got you covered. We're going to put it in the comments. We're going to pin it to the top. It's right there for you. And if you scroll down below, you'll be able to see where you can enter your first name and email. We'll send it right to you. Okay. Now, after that, something special is going to happen. 
We're going to talk about that in a second. But this summertime soup and salad guide, 10 recipes for amazing, you know, not only salad dressings, but also soups. It's right there for you. So feel free to go ahead and grab that. Um, let's go back to Robbie. I feel like, uh, and he's moved on to I'd the- like a play-by-play update, please. Yep. I, he has moved on to the strawberries, folks. We've got four, four ways that he has cut the strawberries, and he is really attacking that red. How's that? Corey, that was great. Amazing. Sorry. Amazing. Sorry. Cyrus, do you like strawberries? Uh, I do. And Indigo, our 10-month-old daughter, goes nutsos for them. She calls them strawberries, oh. and um, she can't get enough of them. I mean, she literally, like, I, I feed them to her, and she ends up with, like, strawberry juice all over her face. It's the cutest thing I've ever seen before. So I have no choice but to like them myself. My, no. Hey, hey, Robbie, what do you what do you got on there? You got spinach, you got mangoes, you got kiwi, you got strawberries. What else? So the golden kiwi, to be clear. And golden, I yes. think you, yep, you labeled everything. And now I, I think it's actually time for me to move on to the dressing. Okay. Now beautiful. I need to say, I need to say before you had that dressing, Robbie, that I'm a little bit insulted because when I've seen you do salads at my house for yourself, you, 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 you literally fill up a trough. It's not a little, a little plate like that. So maybe is this just for the show? Because I'm serious. I'm embarrassed by how small that is. I, I would agree with you. I would agree with you. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he's trying to lose weight or something. I, what, what's the deal, Robbie? I'm, I'm very sorry to let you down. Um, in this case, you're, I'm just following the recipe. And you're right. <laughs> I would have at least triple this. But, guys, I understand some of you are just getting started, so this is going to be great. Yeah. Now, Corey, this is, the, this is the big moment, man. This is where yep. we're going to start making the dressing. Yep, yep. Okay. Now, let's, let's talk about one of the main ingredients inside this dressing while you prepare it. We can see that that's a carrot, so that's like a no-duh moment. But this omelet green, which, which flavor of omelet green are you going to be using today? Okay, the one that I use every day, omelet green hibiscus. And Cyrus can explain the science behind all this, but I'll tell you right now, as a person living with type 1 diabetes, the number one reason I use the omelet green is because I noticed it stabilized my dawn phenomenon, okay? My, my blood glucose control in the morning and it has improved as I consistently use this product. And um, there's a lot of benefits, but that's what it's done for me. Okay. Uh, Cyrus. Well, well, you know what? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Robbie. Corey, Corey before, right. before you go on to, to Cyrus about this, I just want to say that, you know, I, I have never tried omelet green, but I have read all about the benefits from, in Dr. Bre uh, Greger's posts. And uh, he is ob absolutely a huge, huge fan of omelet green. And obviously, I, I don't have diabetes. But let me ask you this, Cyrus and Robbie and, and Corey. Is this, would this be beneficial for me, even if I don't have diabetes? Yeah. Uh, that's probably one of the most important questions uh, that we yeah. get asked all the time. So let me do the quick story of the Indian gooseberry. Can you, can you maybe zoom in on this bad boy? Okay. So this is a bottle of Amla Green, but I want you to look at that thing right there. That is the actual Indian gooseberry. Okay. So that thing, it looks like a grape. It's about the size of a grape and it's this like fluorescent green berry that comes from India. And uh, the, the Indian gooseberry has been used in Ayurvedic medicine for more than 2,000 years. And they, they prescribe it for practically everything. You got a stomachache, take some omelet berries. You got a headache, take some omelet berries. You got diabetes, take an omelet berries. You got cholesterol is too high, take some omelet berries. You got bitten by a snake, take some omelet berries. I mean, it's, it's almost absurd what they prescribe it for, right? So when I first started reading about these things, I was like, oh, what is this like witch medicine? That's, that's not real, right? But then I started to recognize that there's a lot of evidence-based research that has been performed over the past 20 to 30 years by modern research groups around the world to try and figure out what is the magic of these berries. And what they have found is actually pretty fascinating, which is that the Indian gooseberry is the single most powerful antioxidant-containing food of any food ever discovered by human beings. So you see every so often, and it's like walnuts have high antioxidant value. Acai berries are pretty high. Raspberries are pretty high. Dark chocolate's pretty high. Red wine's pretty high. Turmeric's pretty high. But you take the, the asa, I'm sorry, the, the, the amla berry, and you rank it on the same scale, the ORAC scale, to try and figure out how powerful it is. 
most of the other antioxidants fall into the like low thousand category, 2000, 4000, 6000 of their ORAC value, which is the strength of their, their uh, antioxidant power. Amla berries, 261,500. I mean, they are like 10 to 100 times more powerful than a lot of the other things that you see in the supermarket. So there's three things that I want everybody to focus on when it comes to amla berries. Number one, the world's most powerful cholesterol reducing food ever discovered. There is no single food that you can put into your diet that has more power to reduce your cholesterol than amla berries. Number two, one of the most powerful blood pressure lowering foods ever discovered by human beings. You read all about beets as being a powerful nitrate containing vegetable and spinach and arugula because they can lower your blood pressure. Amla berries don't have nitrates in them. They have other compounds that also reduce blood pressure. The third thing is that it is one of the most powerful blood glucose lowering foods ever discovered by human beings. So if you are like most humans and want a normal cholesterol level, a normal blood glucose level, and a normal blood pressure, then join the club. Amla berries could definitely benefit you. Now, you may also be thinking like, well, you know, I already have that, Cyrus. I don't, I don't need any extra boost. The answer is great. If you want no extra boost, then don't worry about it. But having an incredibly powerful antioxidant in your diet on a daily basis has literally no side effect. Think about it that way. This is a medicine. And this medicine is very powerful for improved vision, improved hair growth, improved nail uh, density. And they've known this again in India for a long time. Women use it all the time to grow their hair a little bit more to get better skin. And so you can also use it topically, not necessarily the tea, but you can use amla topically. Point being, it's, it has a wide variety of medicinal properties. And for that reason, RIP, if you don't have diabetes or hypertension or high cholesterol, doesn't matter. It's something that you definitely would benefit from putting into your diet if it already isn't there yet. Uh, beautiful. And thank you for that. Um, I, like I do it. want to address, oh, there's a, there's a quick question. So Joan came in late and she said, kindly tell me the ingredients of the salad. Thank you. As I tuned in late, well, we, <laughs> we will do that, but Joan, um, what you can do is we're going to put a URL up and we'll just give you not only this salad dressing and salad guide, but also we will send you, uh, 10 recipes that you can just make at home. It's right there at the bottom of the screen. You can see it is on the slash pages slash summertime. We're going to have summertime soups and salads for you. So that's where you can get it. Um, Rip, you were, you were saying something. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Hey Corey. Hey, no, I was going to say that, you know, the plan strong philosophy is, you know, we really don't push supplements. The only thing that we really recommend obviously is B12. Um, because that's something that everybody should be taking because we can't get it uh, from our whole plant-based foods. Cause as you guys know, they're so clean. And then we really don't want you to take a supplement unless you have a known deficiency. But as Cyrus and Robbie have said, this, this Amla green, it seems to be a bit of anomaly in that it is a whole food. It has all these powerful properties to it. And so I want the plant strong audience to know that I am very open to the Amla green that's why I'm having these guys on the show today, obviously, in addition to there's such amazing resources uh, around everything whole food plant based. So I can't wait to try the Amla Green and um, uh, as soon as I get home to Austin, Texas. Incredible. Well, we're going to tell you guys how to get all of the varieties of Amla Green here uh, right at the end. But uh, Robbie, what do we got? This dressing looks nice. Corey, it's time for another play-by-play, -play, bro. I did some dressing. <laughs> okay, I did some blending. Okay. And now, what I'm going to do, I put the omelet green in the dressing, okay? So, that's what I did. You saw that. Now, yep. what we're going to do is we're going to try and do this as, as elegantly as possible. We're going to take the dressing, and we're going to – we're just going to drizzle it onto – oh, I don't think it's going so well. It's, it's a bunch of clumps, guys. Oh, shoot. It's I okay. wanted to drizzle it, you know, like like a line, you know, you know how they do that. Yeah, hey, it's all right. Robbie, Robbie, don't be yeah. a perfectionist. It looks great. It looks great. I appreciate you. Okay, but the if you could only taste it, like guys. Oh my god. Okay, all I put in the dressing was frozen pineapple. Um, I put ginger, 
and I put carrots, and then amla green, amla green hibiscus, okay? And honestly, you're right, Rip, like, let's be truthful. I would put it in a gigantic bowl and then hack it together like Cyrus likes to joke about my hacking. But uh, that's the way I would make this. But the, the ingredients are so high quality, like the, the nutritional value of this salad is outrageous. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And, 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 and Robbie, when you would eat this, would you stir it up or would you just kind of take it with a fork as it is right now? Okay, that's a good question. So usually I put it in a big bowl and yeah. I hack it together and I mix it up. We've everybody seen me do that. But yeah. technically, I meet my restaurants quite frequently and they serve me something like this. And I just take a fork to it and eat it, you know? It's cool. It's not my yeah. preferred way to do it, but that's how I would do it in this situation. Got Love it. it. All right. So now that we've got everything that we need, uh, are, are, do you going to chop this thing up? Are you going to chop this thing up, Robbie? No, I think I'm just going to eat it just like I said I was. Uh, I'm going to do it on camera just for everybody so you, you guys believe me. Well, I think it would be more entertaining if you uh, put your hands behind your back and then just uh, lowered your face into the plate. Okay. So here's what we're going to take a fork. We're going to get... how you just pretended like you couldn't hear me. No, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a golden kiwi, a strawberry, some spinach. Uh, let's get the other camera. Okay, I'm gonna get a blueberry in here. Let's see if I can get a blueberry in there. Okay, we got a blueberry. We're gonna get a mango. We're gonna get some dressing. Look at that, guys. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you need a longer fork. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Oh my. Oh my God. I love it. I'm sorry. The ginger, the ginger and the dressing is everything, guys. Wow. Well, the Amla Green gives you some color. This style, this is amazing. I mean, I, I mean, who's not ready to make this? I think it's perfect. I, I think I think it's time that now that we have a successful salad, we go to a couple questions from you guys. Um, okay. You know, let us know, guys. We've got three awesome dudes here that are ready to answer any questions. I like to call it a lightning round, and I'm just riffing right now because the truth is there's a bit of a delay between when I'm saying stuff and when you can come in. But um, okay, okay. Uh, Macro artist says, "Has anybody tried Mamie dragon fruit and cherimoya?" Yeah, the answer is absolutely. So there's a three fruits: mame, sapote, dragon fruit, um, <laughs> which is also known as pitaya, and then cherimoya. Um, all three of them are phenomenal fruits. So if you get your hands on them, you're lucky. Enjoy them. That's a that's a mame sapote that Robbie's holding there right now. It's like a pink avocado on the inside, and it is, in my opinion, one of the world's greatest things. Holy cow. I've never even seen one These of guys, things. people, these guys know their fruits like nobody. <laughs> All right. Um, talk to me about another one. Let's see. Robbie, do you supplement carnosine, taurine, or beta alanine? alanine? I do not supplement those things. Okay. That's a pretty simple question, Rebecca. Thank you for asking. Susan says, the chef last week mentioned he would share when it's best to eat bananas. Oh, no, that was me. Okay, so listen, <laughs> guys, Susan needs to know. Rip, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this your way. If you don't know it, it's okay. We'll go, we'll go. I'm going to go to each one of you. There's, a, there's like an evolution of bananas in their short lifespan, okay, once they're picked from the tree. You got like green, yellow, bright yellow, yellow with spots dark yellow and dark brown do you know if in the lifespan of the bananas where they are the best to consume well i can tell you for me personally i like them when they're not brown but they don't have spots i think they're more flavorful personally when they're closer to being like yellow but you got to be able to peel them right otherwise they got that chalky flavor to them but yeah i have read i have read that you know, if you're going for maximum antioxidant value, then you want them to be brown with spots on them. But I don't like them that way. <laughs> okay. Personally. Okay. Yeah. Um, it could be controversial real quick. Yeah. What do you say? Are you, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if there's more to that. Cyrus, do you have any? Oh, Rick, Rick, would you eat these? Only if I was with you guys. <laughs> okay. This Not is voluntarily. This is a peace saying Raja banana. 
and it has let me show you the inside okay it has a caramel flavor oh right? my gosh it's, it's a little bit more like uh like a um like a, a plantain okay it's yeah. fantastic and um i just want y'all to know about that okay moving on well okay um cyrus is there uh we will ask we'll answer about these mushrooms in a second cyrus is there a, is there a nutritional and the guys he has a doctorate degree in nutritional biochemistry so cyrus is there is there a difference between a, a brand new banana and a, and a super old banana uh, for the nutritional value okay so one of the things that happens when any fruit ripens um, is that it off gases a gas known as ethylene. Okay. So ethylene is the gas that it gives off. And ethylene is also the stimulant that gets other unripe fruits in the vicinity to become riper. So it's like this feed forward mechanism. So you take a banana and a banana will off gas ethylene as it starts to ripen. It will go from being a more starchy consistency that has kind of like a a uh, more potatoy flavor to it and a, like a starchier kind of like less sweet consistency. And then it will become sweeter over the course of time. And you will be able to see that you'll be able to taste it and it'll be pretty obvious. Um, the off gassing of ethylene will then cause other bananas in the vicinity to also start to ripen and start to become uh, more, you know, more ripe as time goes on. But the point is from a nutritional value, you're basically trading starch, more starch at the beginning for more free available glucose and fructose. And I don't want people to think that glucose and fructose are bad for them because they are not. When it comes from the natural world, glucose and fructose are actually fuels for your brain, for your liver, for your kidneys, for your eyes, you name it. Um, and what you're tasting is the freely accessible carbohydrate that got broken down from starch into fr uh, free sugar. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Corey, Corey, I need to ask, uh, Cyrus, the follow-up question. So, Cyrus, Hit me. if I can't stand brown, spotty bananas, yeah, how far away do my new bananas need to be away? Need to be away from the old bananas so that the off-gassing doesn't affect and prematurely turn those newer ones. <laughs> That's a great question. So, I'm in the same camp as you, which I don't. I hate this brown, spotty bananas. It's, I can't stand it. Um, how far away? I don't. I honestly, I don't know the answer. I don't know if there's an answer to that question. I would say like. Uh, put them a foot away or something like that. Usually, let's put it this way. If you wanted to make fruits ripen faster, like let's say you had some mangoes or some papayas or maybe some, uh, I don't know, some cherimoya as an example, that you were like, huh, I need to get this thing to ripen faster. The easiest way to do it is to take that fruit, put it into a paper bag, and then put one or two bananas in that bag and seal the whole thing up. Now, it's a contained environment. The bananas will off-gas ethylene. The ethylene will then act on the other fruits and get everything to start to ripen faster. And then you'll end up with like this, this ethylene storm inside and everything will ripen together. Okay? But if they're just sitting on your countertop, then the bananas, yes, they'll off-gas ethylene, but it'll kind of get diffused into the environment so it won't have nearly the same effect. Right. So yeah. if they're just sitting on your countertop, then I would say it's not that big of a deal. It's more if they're in a contained cupboard or box or environment that you're going to get that ethylene storm happening. Got right. it. All right. 12 inches. Nice. <laughs> 12 inches apart. All right. Um, I don't see you guys using mushrooms much. Oh, how do you feel about them? We love mushrooms. All of us love mushrooms. Absolutely love mushrooms. Yeah. So we, we don't have mushrooms in this particular meal, but there are plenty of other meals. Uh, that include mushrooms and we can do an entire show on the benefits of mushrooms, either whether they're like white mushrooms, brown mushrooms, creamy mushrooms, or whether they're the more exotic Asian mushrooms as well. So, you know, that's a whole separate thing, but mushrooms are, uh, are without question, superfoods, even though I don't like to use that term, uh, very, very powerful medicinal properties and should definitely be part of uh, a whole food plant-based diet if you can. All right, guys, we're going to do four more questions and then we're going to get out of here. Okay. Um, and Robbie and Robbie will have finished that salad in that time. <laughs> you betcha, Rip. You betcha. Carol, you're asking if any of the foods are organic. All right, here I'm gonna let Rip cover uh, his his stance on organic and and go from there. So Rip, as you think about organic, conventional things like that, what what is your what is your stance on that? So, my mo the most important thing to me is that you are doing your best to consume a whole food plant-based diet. That's number one. And then if you want to like support organic, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, but first and foremost, whole food, plant-based, then you decide, okay, and, and organic's important to me, but 
frankly, I do a combination of conventional, organic, you know, cost is always a factor. Um, if I eat a lot of something like, let's say, green leafies or um, I don't know, bananas, the things that I eat the most of, I'm going to want those to be organic. But it is not at all a necessity when it comes to this lifestyle. Like I could have never gotten a bunch of Texas male firefighters to do this. If I said, listen, guys, it's got to be organic. It's got to be, you know, this. It's got to be, you know, blah, blah, blah. I just want people to eat more whole plants, right? That's where we, everybody yeah. needs to start. All right, Vivian's uh, revealing the secret here. Uh, thanks, Vivian. Thanks for your comment. We'll make sure that we we cover that. That's amazing. Okay. Uh, can you eat fruit with a fatty liver? Who wants to cover that one? I think oh, that's yeah. I'll take that one in a heartbeat. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Fatty liver disease, otherwise known as NAFLD, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is you can think of it as basically being an advanced form of insulin resistance inside of your liver. Okay. So if you have a spectrum right here, you got NAFLD, which is over on the, like the, the extreme end of insulin resistance. And the question is, well, what caused insulin resistance in the first place in your liver? If you look into the scientific research and what we've written about in our book, Mastering Diabetes is all about the fact that insulin resistance is caused by a diet that contains excess saturated fat. We've been told over and over and over again that diabetes and insulin resistance is all about sugar. And the answer is it kind of is, but it isn't really. The most powerful and most reproducible way that you can develop insulin resistance inside of a human or any mammal for that matter is by feeding them excess saturated fat. So if you have your fatty liver, if you already have NAFLD and you've been diagnosed with it and you want to improve the health of your liver and reverse that process, you absolutely can eat fruit and should eat fruit. And more importantly, the bigger picture is to, number one, lower your total fat intake to less than 15% of total calories. Number two, eat as much plant material as possible. And number three, we would all agree on this, eat as much whole food as possible, not stuff that comes in packages or, pan or, or bottles or cans, okay? So if you can eat low-fat, plant-based, whole food, then you can eat the foods that Robbie's got on the screen. You can eat potatoes. You can eat yams. You can eat corn. You can eat uh, acai bowls, okay? Anything that falls into the low-fat, plant-based, whole food umbrella is fair game to you. And not only is that something you can do, that's something that will actually reverse the insulin resistance process and make you less insulin resistant, aka less fatty liver, and lower your cholesterol, lower your blood pressure, and make you a healthier person overall. All right. Hey, listen. Uh, um, uh, sorry, Rip. Uh, you want me to go or you go? Can you hear me? Me? Okay, here I go. Okay, so Janet asked a question. Um, I have two more questions that we're going to get to, but Janet's asking a question. I've had a lot of people asking about um, where they can get the, the Omla Green powder. Okay, guys? And all you need to know is what, one thing. All right? We want to give you the recipe guide. We want to give you this, all right? That'll that'll show you where you can get it. But more, more than that, we want to make sure that you have not only this recipe, but 10 additional recipes that are tied to soups and salad dressings, salads that you can use, all right? Whether you have the on the green product or not, okay? We want you to make sure that you have easy, whole food, plant-based recipes. They're right there for you. And it's, it's a page that looks just like this. All you do is you scroll down, enter your email, enter your name, and you're going to find out uh, exactly. It's going to come to your inbox. It's going to pop up right there for you. And then you're good to go. Okay. So that that's where it is. Um, let's get back to the questions. We have time for two more questions and we got to get out of here. Um, uh, the one question is going to be put up on the screen by Bess. I know she stars them in the order they came in. Okay. Fruits and weight loss. All right. This is going to go to you, Robbie. And um, can we go to the other camera for Robbie, Robbie's wide camera, so we can see his beautiful face. Um, Robbie, uh, fruits for weight loss. Uh, that's what she's trying to do now. Can, can eating lots of fruit help you lose weight? Okay. So the main reason that fruit can help you lose weight is because it's low in calorie density. And if you're a fan of Rip and you're a fan of his book and his podcast, I'm sure you've heard this a million times over. Um, calorie density is the name of the game when it comes to weight loss. So you can eat more and weigh less when there's more water and fiber in the foods that you're eating. So 
the problem is not fruit. It's not the potatoes. It's the things that people eat fruit with, whether they're doing like fruit juices or when you're having potatoes, you know, you're, you're adding butter and cheese and all this stuff. So these foods have a low calorie density, which will promote weight loss. And if you have any questions about that, go to our website, watch our testimonials. We also have them on YouTube. I think that question came from YouTube. Um, tons of testimonials of people sharing their story and seeing is believing. And also there's a Cyrus was talking about fatty liver. Raj is a person who's been through our program, completely reverses fatty liver. So is Tammy. So learn from those stories and eat these foods with confidence. Okay, beautiful. Our last question is, can this way of, way of eating help me with pulmonary hypertension? Now, as the son of one of the foremost, you know, heart doctors in the world, I'm going to let Rip kind of attack this one. Um, pulmonary hypertension can eating this way. I'm assuming you are saying a whole food plant-based diet. Uh, Rip, talk to me. Is it good for the heart? Yeah. Hey, sorry. I'm having some mic issues here. Um, yes. So a a a absolutely. If we're just talking about high blood pressure, uh, whole food plant-based diet, getting rid of the saturated fats, getting rid of the excessive amounts of sodium in the standard American diet, really being mindful of eating when you eat packaged, canned and processed foods, that 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 sodium is as close to as close to possible as being in a one to one ratio with as far as the number of calories per serving with the number of milligrams per serving, you're going to hit an absolute home run in our six and seven day immersion programs that we've done for the last decade, Corey, we have seen in as little as seven days, people's blood pressures coming down, typically 10 on the systolic and five on the diastolic. And that's just for starters. So the longer you do this, the longer you're diligent with whole food, plant-based, watching your sodium intake, really minimizing the packaged box and canned foods, you can absolutely bring down that, that hypertension. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank Real you quick. for that answer. Um, someone said that the Omega Green website is in French. Uh, Janet, that is just simply not true. You are on the wrong website. <laughs> uh, Janet, if it is in French, it may be because you're, uh, you're either using a VPN that's in a French-speaking country or uh, your computer thinks that you are in a French-speaking country. So if you can fix that, then it, you'll, you'll get to the real site that's in English. Hey, everybody. Uh, I want to just say thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for tuning in. As you can see, Robbie's salad is gone. In fact, I'm pretty positive that I saw him using a spinach leaf as a napkin to clear the plate. Is that correct, Robbie? Is that a strategy that you use? hundred percent. I did not waste anything. Okay. This plate, this plate is clean. Okay. That was a great meal. And that was just spinach that cleaned it up. All right. So well, you know, we promised the people a picture of you as an absolute mess covered in mango. And so that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, if it's okay, Bess, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and try my best to be uh, very, very tech savvy. And I hope that this works. Um, so this, my friends, is Robbie covered in mango. Now, it looks like a normal dude, right? But if you zoom in, you'll be able to see, oh, geez, there it is. Mango, mango, also mango here. If you can see his shiny hands also covered in mango and the man's face has mango hanging off of it. So, does this guy love mangoes? Yes, he does. This is Robbie in his true form. This is who this man is. And uh, darn it, it is just fine. You know? That's exactly so, right, Corey. Right. Way to be you, buddy. <laughs> that was a great lunch. Hey, with that, everyone, I just want to say thanks for tuning in, okay? Uh, each week we're here to not only provide you a recipe, give you some free resources. We also want to let you know where these products are available. So if you have any questions, just leave us a comment. We do respond to every comment. And um, if you want the guide, if you're getting the guide for the salad dressing and the recipe for the salad, just let us know. Just say, hey, I can't find the guide. This is the URL. Okay, you can go there and you can grab it. It's completely and totally free. Um, you'll get it right to your inbox. But if you have any questions, just let us know and we'll be happy to respond. All right, everybody. Cyrus, Robbie. Rip, Thank you. Appreciate the New York it. Times best-selling trio. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being here. Guys, we'll see you soon. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Corey. In. Thank you, Rip. See you next week. Thank Bye you, Corey, Robbie, Cyrus.
We'll you guys, you guys rock. Later.